Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Tuesday the 7th of March 2023. In today's Mill News, we're going to start off with this. Gary Rowett claims no looting town hangover for Millwall in Norwich City defeat. Some fans were concerned that the lines of internality could be damaged after Luke Berry's late equaliser stunned them at Kent Road. Gary Rowett doesn't believe that Millwall suffered a hangover from their late sucker punch at Luton Town as they were beaten 3 2 by Norwich City on Saturday afternoon. Uh, the manager backed his side to bounce back from Luke Berry's 88 minute equaliser last Tuesday, having thrown away a two goal lead to draw 2 2 at Kenilworth Road. However, the Lions are 3 1 down after 65 minutes against the Canaries, although they ended up registering more than double the amount of shots over the course of the game. Uh, Saturday's clash out the den did, however, come after a hectic February when Mill played seven games in a matter of weeks. Uh, four weeks. Uh, it's, it's fair to say that it did not take its toll. On the f- it, it's fair to say that it did, it did take its toll uh, on the first team squad with a number of injuries making it increasingly difficult to rotate the starting lineup in an important part of the season. Exactly, we were basically losing one player every game. Uh, it's, uh, and then you end up playing, even though he played well against Sheffield United, Shackleton, it was diminishing returns because the reason why he's not a starter is he can't be consistent. He can come in and be absolutely brilliant for one game, and if, and then okay, do it again. It's like, mm, yeah, not quite, not quite. Um, and then the third game, like, he, um, I don't think you can say it's a hangover because we lost the game. Rowett argued, we'd gone one up, started well, and after thirty minutes, I don't think anyone would have said that. It was disappointing to be pegged back late on, but we spoke about it before that we probably didn't deserve our two goals at Luton. And you can have an argument today that maybe Dor- Norwich didn't deserve to be 3 1 up. They are a good quality side. But it just goes to show the championship. Uh, we spoke before the Sheffield United game. Burnley stoking away, uh, Luton away, and Norwich at home is tough. It's tough five games. To win two of them and draw two of them, to come into this fifth game and then go toe to toe with a very good side who have had a week's rest, it makes a big difference at this level. I don't think there's any disgrace. It's nice we've got a week with no game in some ways because we've got a lot of players who have given absolutely everything. That's sometimes all you can ask. It's disappointing the goals we've conceded today, uh, but did we give everything uh, But did we give everything we had to try and get a result? I think we did, and we just came up a bit short. Uh, yeah. Um, there's no disgrace in, in that. Um, it wasn't. They got very lucky. With I think they had nine shots. They scored three, three goals, and one of them was uh, an own goal. Uh, in in any other um, situation, we could have come out of that result with a two-one win or a two-two draw. Just um, wasn't to be. So moving on to this now from BBC.co.uk. Uh, their sport page, Football Millwall. They're talking to Matt Smith about Millwall and Gary Rowett, which is uh, kind of weird. I don't know, I don't know why they're doing it. Um, obviously, uh, Matt Smith is now up in Salford. The BBC themselves are now up in Salford. And you can see, if you've been watching BBC, BBC News, um, I don't know if they still do it because I, I haven't watched it for a while. Um, they used to go out on the street and you could tell where it was. Uh, it would always be West London, either Kensington High Street or Hammersmith or somewhere near there um, because they run out of Shepherd's Bush, uh, a white city. So they would go on the on the, on the the street and ask sick and white phone in the face, what do you think about blah de blah de blah today being in the news? And you that's what... You get all get all these people uh, answering questions, and obviously when they moved to Salford, that kind of flipped on its head, and um, they now go out on the streets of Salford and do the same thing. So it seems that's what they're doing to Matt Smith. They they had him around for something and just asked him about uh, Gary Rowett and Mia Wall, and then hence we get this uh, kind of piece. So. Former Mill striker Matt Smith is back to his former manager Gary Rat to finally break the club's Premier League duck. The South Londoners, who were last in the top flight in the 89 90 season, sit seventh in the Championship. Smith, 33, scored 17 goals in 91 games in three seasons at the Den, 
before joining Salford City in 2022. Season on season, they seem to be getting closer. Rowe is taking them to the next level, Smith said. They look like a really strong outfit again this season. You expect them to be at the top end of the table now. Millwall were beaten 3-2 at home on Saturday by Norwich, who climbed above their hosts into the final playoff position. It was the first time Rowe's Lions have lost at in the championship since a 2-0 reverse in September to another of Smith's old clubs, Queen's Park Rangers. A home defeat at a crucial moment to a promotion rival has not given Smith any reason to doubt the 49-year-old former Stoke City and Birmingham boss I think he's one of the best managers in the division. I've worked under a lot of different managers and he's as good as they come, Smith told uh, BBC Radio London. Oh, so it was a Radio London. Okay, fair enough. He's provided a real level of consistency to that club on a personal level. He's a really good bloke. I really enjoyed working for him. I know the lads really enjoy working for him. He's a really humble, nice guy and you can talk to uh, very respectful. He's been so consistent at, at all these previous clubs. It's no surprise to me that they're playing for the promotion. Former Leeds and Fulham striker Smith was signed by Mills record goal scorer Neil Harris in July 2019 from Queen's Park Rangers. A slow start to the se- uh, following season led to Rowe replacing Harris who stood down two months into the new season after a seven-match winless run. He's come off the back of the excellent work that Neil Harris did at the club and stabilising them as a solid championship team, Smith said. He never gets too high with the highs or, or low with the lows and he'll trust his process of monitoring the lads and looking after them uh, where they need looking after to get the best out of them. It's great to see them battling at the top end of the table and mounting a really good push uh, for the lads and for the manager. I really hope they can do it. The Mule's next fixture is away to Reading on the 11th of March. Uh, yes, indeed. It's a praise for Gary Rout there from Matt Smith. Um, and in terms of the overall picture, um, so what happens now? So Gary out again, having another crack, seemingly doing better. He's definitely improved the team. Um, if we don't get in the playoffs, what happens? Do we break it up? Uh, do we sell uh, McNamara? Do we sell Fleming? Um, do we try and just stabilise in the championship and uh, go again with uh, pushing on players from the youth, like my main essay? Any Marku and other players like that, and bring in, spend some of that money on some quality again. Um, or do we try again? Or even if we do get in the playoffs and we get knocked out, either in the semis or the final, obviously if we get to the final, that'd be a bit of a money spinner. Um, do we go again? If we fail, have we got one more year in this squad? Or now we've got one more year with Gary Rowett. Um, will he be poached away? Now you, you've heard what he said there. He's, he's been he's been building it. He's a builder, which I don't think is attractive to many Premier League teams. They kind of want success straight away. They want instant success. Just add water and stir, and uh, voila, there you go. You've got it. Um, they don't want people to build. That's not what they're looking for, um, which is a shame in this day and age, but it is what it is. Um, the closest you're going to get is someone like Hedy Al, who's gone in at Newcastle, and, and they are building there with that, uh, kind of, but they are pumping a lot of money in. Um, and it's not hard to build on a team like Newcastle. But in terms of lower, clubs lower down the table, um, I don't think Gary Rowett's going to be an attractive prospect to them. Maybe to another championship team uh, with more money, but again, um, with the PF, uh, FFP, financial fair play stuff, um, what's that going to do to the, uh, Is that kind of thing going to be evened out? Who knows, but yeah, so just. And a lot of people uh, have. Uh, I kind of noticed that it was Gary Rat's birthday yesterday. Um, so I don't know when this article was written. Um, I think it, it, it came up today, but I don't know when they wrote the copy. Uh, is Gary Rat 49 or was yesterday's 50th birthday? Because um, 
there was no mention on Mill's Twitter saying wishing Gary Rowe a happy birthday. And a lot of people kind of put two and two together and figured, oh, what's, what's that about? Why hasn't that happened? Um, but I think it was just Mondays is generally uh, an off day for, for people at Millwall, especially when you don't have a game on Tuesday and we've had just had a, a insanely busy week, uh, a busy month. So um, I think that, that um, comes into it as well. So, yeah, Matt Smith back in Gary Rowett. And uh, we shall see what he does. What's What does the future hold for Gary Rowett and Millwall? Is it Premier League? Um, not that that's obviously you want to get there just for the money, but in terms of the football and the VAR and the nonsense, that's the media circus that goes around it. It's a bit of a jar, to be honest, but um, you, you that's the top. And if you're doing anything competitive, you want to get to the top. You don't want to just strive for nothing. What are you striving for? To get to the top. So even though it will be a bit a bit muggy, we, we definitely do want to get to the Premier League. It would, um, one season in the Premier League will pay for Mill's wage bill in the Championship for about three or four seasons. So, Or maybe even more than that. So there you go. Now, moving on to this. The under-21s played today. It's a big, big game at the top of the table. And it wasn't streamed live, so you can watch it. But uh, there is a Bristol City vlogger who went to the game and filmed it, filmed parts of it. And he's chopped it up and put it on his YouTube channel. His name's James Buchanan, I think. So if you just um, search for that, you can probably find it. Or I'll put the link in my community tab on YouTube. Uh, if Watching this on bitch shoot, you'll have to go over to YouTube. Um, yeah, it finished goalless. It was nil nil, and Millwall first teamers, some of them, although not established ones, not like other teams have been doing to us. Our third choice goalkeeper, who hasn't played any first team minutes, um, SA, who has played a few uh, times off the bench, and Marku, who's only come off the bench once. Um, so yeah. They played out a goalless draw at Ashton Gate on Tuesday afternoon. The result keeps the two sides level on points at the summit of the southern section with the lines on top on goal difference. Connell Truman, Adamu Amaku and Romain Essay all started at Ashton Gate, the latter two playing a large portion of the fixture before being withdrawn late on. Next up for the under-21s is a trip to Colchester United on Tuesday the 21st of March. And at the time of filming this video, that game at Colchester is set to be at more than than Tiptree tip FC. That may change, but at the moment it's set to be a, a, a state a non-league stadium that you can attend, and I believe the price is five pounds cash on turnstile. Uh, the team for that the game today was Truman, Walker, Adam Maliki, uh, Oliver Evans, Vid, Ockley, Allen, Cotton, Amaku, Essa, and Droz. And the substitutions were Stevenson on for Walker in 87 minutes. Uh, Leahy on for Imaku on the 85th minute, Massey on for SA in the injury time, and Boateng on for Dross on the 73rd minute, and the unused sub was Joe Wright. So there you go, and that leaves the table looking like uh, this. So we are level on points, we are top on goal difference, but Bristol City have a game in hand because I think they postponed uh, their game last week, which is. Uh, a bit uh, naughty because obviously they're trying to um, pace it out and get in a situation where they know what they have to do but what can you do now we do have Reading with three games in hand on us but if they win all those games in hand they are still one point short of us so there you go that's good uh, next up obviously Colchester who are not they're about at the bottom, but they're not far, they're not the worst team in the league. They've got six wins. Um, so there you go. There's the table. And, uh, yeah, there is a gap. And we only have to finish in the top two to go to the end of season tournament. So still sitting pretty. It's looking good. Obviously no Abdul Abdul Malik, which is a big miss, but 
Hey ho. We got SA and the Maku and Truman. And they got the result over the line. They didn't lose. So fantastic. Now, moving on to this from MilwaukeeFC.co.uk and club's official website. Tom Bradshaw nominated for February 2023 PFA Virtu Motors Player of the Month Award. Um, so, yeah, obviously, after the, the uh, situation, the, the uh, performances that he put in last month, uh, the Welsh man was instrumental in the second month of the Gift of the Lions, scoring five times, including a hat-trick against Sheffield United. And helping the team into the division's top six, you can now vote for a striker to take the award. Um, and the other nominations are Nathan Teller, Burnley, uh, Victor Kikiris, Chubak, Tom, uh, Tom Ince, and Joel Perot. Obviously, this is a. Uh, you, you click on that link, it'll take you to 90 minutes. Then you click on another link, and it'll take you to a place to vote. And I think it tracks you so that they you know, tra track your IP so that. You, then they're sure that you can only vote once. I, I think that's what happened. But again, it's the thing that you vote on. So if you love Tom Bradshaw, you love what he's doing, give him a vote so he can get this plastic award and he can uh, feel very good about himself and maybe um, play better in the future. Now, last but not least, a cracking a turn of affairs. This is from afcwimbledon.co.uk. Why am I showing you this? Double Diamond Dons. Umbro deal agreed. Yes, they are seeming up with the English manufacturer. Although Umbro have for many years been owned by Nike. Or Nike, whatever you call them. I call them Nike. Um, yes, so obviously AFC Wimbledon were one of the teams this season who signed a new deal. With Hummel, although they didn't sign it for Hummel, they signed it with Elite Sports Pro, uh, the exclusive UK distributor in Great Britain for Hummel products. And as you know, or you may or may not know, they went bust. So that's left several teams uh, pissed off and annoyed and owed money, by the way. Uh, so. A lot of teams have uh, jumped ship. So, so far, we don't know what Millwall are doing. I think it's assumed that they're going to leave because they just cut the price of all the Hummel stuff by 50%. What that will do in terms of the future, if we do get to the playoff final, will they sell special shirts for playoff final or something? I don't know. Um, can they even do that? Maybe they'll make up, knock up their own t-shirts, but that's not so, kind of the same, is it? But I guess if they're limited edition and they're pretty decent quality, people can probably still buy them. Um, but yeah, so they say, Rich is excited to announce an agreement with Humber and a deal that will see the British sports brand becomes a Don's technical part on a multi-year deal. So starting from next season now, uh, this is interesting because um, so far, what we do know, Southampton said they're, gonna, they're still going to work well, they haven't announced a new deal, which I believe they have to because uh, the new distributors are a different company. The old one's gone in administration. More on that next. Um, so they've just said, well, because Hummel have said they can carry on supplying us kits until the end of the season, we're just going to stick with it for now. But they, there's no been, been no announcement deal. I believe there's been no announcement by Southampton. It's just come came through the Daily Mail of all places so so Southampton carrying on at least until the end of the season Bristol City jumped ship immediately not only that they've got a new um, a new shirt out a home shirt straight away they're going to have a new away kit as well soon from a company called O'Neill's uh, which I mentioned before uh, in a previous video and they're, they're doing that straight away so they've had a new kit in the start of the season from Hummel. And they've got a new kit in the middle of the season as well. It's a kind of crazy situation, but what can you do? And, uh, so we've got Southampton carrying on. AFC Wimbledon moved on. Bristol City have moved on. But Coventry, Coventry love the Hummel stuff. Been their best seller for many, many years. The fans love it as well. 
So they've resigned on a, on a new three three year deal. So we've got one staying, three leaving. We wait to see what Mill will do, but it looks like that they will be leaving as well. Now, um, I could have brought you this earlier. My apologies for this because this is from find and update company information .service .gov .uk. It's basically what was known as Companies House website, and uh, it's a it's an official UK government website gov.uk. Uh, any company that exists, they're on here. You can find out about them. You can find out what what they're doing. Uh, any directors, if you're if you're our director, put your name in this search box and you'll find yourself in it. It might even have your name, your address on there, so. People can uh, find out where you live if you're a company director, unless you put your address as uh, a different place. So be aware of that if you didn't know that. So this came up on the 14th of February on Valentine's Day. I don't know if they're taking piss with that. But the Statement of Affairs. Uh, so I could have bought you this. Uh, two weeks ago, so my apologies, but I've only just figured it out because the AFC Wimbledon deal, I decided to have a little look-see, and here it is. So we now know what's gone on, because here we go. A statement of affairs by the directors of the administrators who are um, dealing with it. So, estimated total assets available for preferential creditors, the one in bold at the bottom. Uh, twenty point three million. So that's not bad. They've got they've got twenty point three million assets. How much how much do they owe the creditors? Well, we can find that out. It's there, but that's that's the totals we actually have. Individual creditors. This is just company creditors. This doesn't ex include employees or consumers. So number one, Fanatics, which is the company that supplies Evan's kits. The Evan did, Evan did all that stuff through an intermediary. So they they, they didn't get touched. The company didn't did it get touched. Fanatics. And they're owed just under a million pounds. Then it's Southampton. Who uh, are owed 773,000 pounds. And then there's various other things. Um, so we are going looking. Millwall. How much are Mill owed by um, Elite Sports Group? And you don't have to go far because we're we're down here on the second page. A Millwall Football Club, one hundred seventy-five thousand pounds, four hundred twenty-two uh, pounds, uh, one hundred seventy-five thousand four hundred twenty-two pounds and ten pence. So that that was the amount of money that uh, we are owed now. Obviously, 20.3 million in assets. We'll find out. So you add all, up all these creditors, and we'll see how much that that is later on. You can see just under Mill is hashtag United in it. They are like a meme club. They're a YouTube club. So I think they sell a lot of shirts because look at this: 148,800 pounds for them, and then Leeds United just under that. Um. So Millwall are what? Fourth highest club affected, so it's definitely the highest outside of, of the Premier League. Um, but uh, in terms of the assets that was listed in in the thing above, now obviously that was that included Mill Mill kits that Mill had to buy from the administrators. So Mill had to pay money to them to get kits from them. And then knock those kits out in the club shop at fifty percent discounts to you Mill fans who have done very well because you you basically cleared them out. It's just some shorts left now. Uh, every, all the Hummel stuff has gone except for about uh, five different var varieties of shorts. But that's the amount of money that Mill are owed. But part of the assets has been Mill's money. That have come from Mill having to buy the so Mill basically, it looks like unless uh, the total debts is more than the total amount of credit, 
mill will, will get paid out from the assets their own money back, which is kind of weird. Um, I assume I think that's how it works. I don't know. But so there's Coventry. They were they were only hit by eighty eight thousand um, pounds. So you can see why they might be interested in doing another deal because it seems to have affected them that much. Um, but what I wanted to do while we go down to the bottom. Uh, there's a fair old uh, list of creditors, some some uh, other companies and stuff, uh, mostly like uh, bins and stuff. Um, Spool, Spool is still going. Um, it's like bin, bin collectors and council tax and stuff like that. Interestingly, there's one that's been redacted. Why has that been redacted? Who are do they owe that money to? Is it MI5, CIA? Like, why has that been redacted? Is it the Mafia? What's going on there? Um, but uh, as you go down, well, one thing I wanted to point out, Royal British Legion of Borough High Street, they owe them £2,644.70. So I assume that's for like the licensing of the copies for the shirts. So they knocked them for that money. Um, and as we go down, we should get a total at the end. So it's, it's in uh, numerical order, so it's the largest at the top, and we go down all the way to 290 quid for, for 216 pounds for various companies that they owe money to, fire safety systems, and stuff like that. There's another one that's been redacted Fleetwood Town, 57 pounds and 60 dates. And you go down and down and down, and, and then there's money that companies owe them, it looks like. But the total, so the total of company um, creditors, assets, money wise, is 9.7 million. So if you remember earlier, it was 20.3 million in assets, 9.7 million in. Um, company money that they owe so that looks like everyone's going to get paid out then so Mill will will get paid the money that they owed by the administrators but because they've just they had to buy the kit from the administrators it looks like they're getting paid with their own money so I don't know if, I assume they don't lose on that because they sold the Hummel kits for 50% off, which I assume is like cost or, or maybe just a little bit more. So it looks like they haven't lost any money at all. With the company having 20.3 million in assets and 9.7 million in liabilities. So some Millwall could have said to them, um, stick stick the kits up your ass, we're not paying for them. But give us our fucking money. And they would have made 175 thousand pound profit they wouldn't they didn't have to buy the kits from Hummel and knock them out but they did which is I which is uh, I think good for a lot of fans if you manage to get in there and get some um, probably not if you spent probably not happy if you spent full price at the start of the season but at least you, you're guaranteed to get one any there are a lot of uh, fans especially ones from abroad going to the club shop and thinking, oh, I can't get I can't get a why can't I buy a shirt? It's like, well, yeah. How long have you got? You want me to tell your story? But yeah, so it looks like all's well that ends well. Unless I'm reading them wrong, it seems to me. Reading this spreadsheet that they have 20 million in assets and only 10 million in debts. So everyone should get weighed out. So there you go. And on that note, thank you for watching and 